Hey YouTube, this is Karsten's XDM45 here. I'm going to make a short little video on my Saga 12 and some tips and fixes for reliability. These, uh, of course, the Sega 12 is is a uh, AK-47 platform, shoots 12 gauge rounds, and uh, it's a lot of fun to shoot. And something you have to remember about these guns: they were designed, they were they were combat guns, military guns from from Russia. They're designed to shoot the big stuff. They are designed to shoot the the double op buckshot and the Magnum rounds. So they'll do fine on that, but of course, not a lot of us have a whole lot of extra money these days to buy the expensive stuff so everybody wants to try to fix these guns so that they'll run on the cheap Walmart 100 pack uh, rounds that you can get and so this is what I did for mine if you've got one that'll right out of the box that'll run the the cheap birdshot uh, that's a good deal but if not here's some things that I've done to kinda uh, get my gun to run and uh, I shoot this thing all the time first thing I did is I cleaned out the I made sure that the gas tube and the gas port was all cleaned out. Now let me kind of show you here zoom in a little bit alright see if I can do this with the camera this here you, you've got the you've got the bolt, you've got the bolt carrier and of course that's going to sit on on top of the gun and you've got the shaft here that, that goes inside the gas tube and then right here you're going to have right here you're going to have the uh, the gas puck okay and then you're going to have your plug what happens is if you look up here on the on the on the tube okay this carrier runs about right there okay it actually runs a little bit further in when the bolts closed and then what happens is you got the you're going to have the gas the 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 plug right up to it and then you're also going to have the the plug itself all right what happens is if you know anything about the Segas, all right, they've got two fittings on there. If you can see that, they've got a fitting one, uh, a setting one, and a setting two. The setting one, what happens is if you look at the the gas block, and you see where the pin is. This little pin right there, a little pin right there. What happens is you turn that you you adjust this block to one of those settings. Now, if you put it on setting one. That's for your magnum loads, buckshot, slugs, that type of things, the more powerful loads. Because what happens is, see if you can see this or not. Uh, let me show you here, get it in the light. See how that's beveled? And what happens is if you're looking lengthwise down the gun, and if it's on setting one, what happens is it's going to be turned. Make sure I got it right here. Yeah, it's going to be turned where it shunts some of the gas. It doesn't allow as much gas to come through and the reason is is because those those heavier loads are going to have more force behind them. But if you rotate it down to where setting 2, you see that? See setting 2 is going to be sitting on the bottom. You notice that bev this bevel right here is going to sit right on top of the gas port. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Okay, see that? See the hole? This this right here, this is the, the gas block, okay? And if you look inside there, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. If you look inside there, you're going to see the hole in the gas block, and in that smaller hole right there, that's one of the gas ports. Got a little bit of crud in there, i got to clean it out later on. But that's one of the gas ports, and what happens is when the gun fires, gas comes through the little hole, okay? Comes through the little hole, and this, uh, this setting allows the, the gas take that puck and it push that and it pushes that puck and which in turn pushes the uh, the bolt carrier all the way back and which allows it to chamber the round. So what, what you want to do is you want to make sure see if I can get a close up in there. You want to make sure that that is nice and clean inside. I already cleaned it out a little bit. I got a little bit of residue inside there. It's not bad for running about 75 rounds the other day. But you want to make sure that that's nice and clean. Okay. Now look at your puck. You want to make sure that the puck is nice and clean. Okay, there's not it. Uh, by the way, don't oil your puck. Okay, <laughs> made that mistake. Now you oil this thing up, and I'm telling you, after 25 rounds, you'll have so much gunk up in that thing. It's not even funny. And so that's that's what happens. All right, let's see if I can get a close up in there. What happens is the puck goes right inside. 
goes right inside there. Get my big thumb out of the way. Goes right inside there. And then I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put that plug in. Here we go. And we're gonna screw that plug in. You want to make sure that that's dry. That's going to be just like a striker channel on a striker fired gun. You don't want a bunch of oil and lube and gunk down in it because it'll just gum up the whole thing. So what I do is I'll turn this thing down. Now you can feel it. See where it clicked? Okay, that's setting one. Let's see if I can get it close up. That's setting one. And so what happens is what, I'm, what you'll do is you'll depress this little pin and you'll spin it one more time to put it on setting two can't do it with just one hand so I'm just gonna leave it as is anyway we've got the setting we've got the setting on there we've got the gas tube cleaned out all right let me come down here to the other end and show you a little bit about the bolt carrier basically what I did is I went through and and polished everything I could I took the bolt carrier and I polished it I polished the top here on the side I noticed that there was a lot of wear right here so I polish this down My daughter's coming home polish this down if you turn it over you're gonna see you see the bottom of the bolt carrier and you notice I've taken all the sharp edges off of it polished it down and the reason is because this part right here is gonna slide back and forth on the hammer okay alright and I went through if you let's see here we go went through on here and I I tried best I could the, the grooves on both sides of the bolt carrier, the groove right there. I smoothed that out the best I could, got some real fine sandpaper and smoothed it down. And then I, I went in here with the rails, the rails all the way up and down, and I smoothed both sides of those rails, smoothed those all the way up and down. All right, let me see if I can get a close up. Let me bring this over in the light where we can see it a little bit better here what I actually did with the bolt okay now this is the position I should say right like that that's gonna be the position right there of it upside down riding back and forth in the receiver and what I did is I took I didn't take a lot of material off but if you'll notice I took all these sharp edges all these sharp edges and I just smoothed them out all these sharp edges and then and then the the the, uh, the tabs here on the side these ride on the actual rails inside the receiver. If you can see that, I did both. I polished those down best I could. I even took the shaft of the shaft of the uh, of the bolt itself and kind of smoothed it down a little bit with the sandpaper. Now uh, be very careful. Okay, I'll turn this over so you can see it. Let's see this other side here. All right, there we go. Do not mess with the firing pin or any of this area down in here. Don't fool with it because you'll mess your gun up. Okay? So don't do that. That'll help. That'll smooth out a whole lot. And then one more area that I wanted to show you, because what happened was is I had some I had some some failure to feed. And what what happened was the, the, the shells were getting stuck. Just like that. Okay? They were getting stuck. Well what it what happened was these edges right here. Let me see if I can get me a pointer over here. Do a little bit better. Okay, these edges right here, and then that edge right here. If I could turn it down, I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know. Anyway, what I did is I went through, I went through, and I beveled just slightly these 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 points right here. I beveled just slightly okay and uh, I got those points I kind of rounded off I took all the sharp edges off of them and now when the when the shell goes in and it hits right here the shell slides right in the shell slides right in so that makes it a lot easier for it to feed uh, so that's that's basically what I've what I've done uh, you know keep your gas tube keep it clean I uh, keep all the parts dry. Get my parts back over here. Keep your parts dry. All right. Uh, one thing you want to go through, and uh, especially any any 
Allen head screws. You want to make sure and keep those all tight. Keep them uh, keep them tightened up and so forth. Kind of show you a little bit of my setup here. But this gun will run. I, I shoot uh, the slugs and buckshot. Uh, of course, I got buckshot. That's my home defense right there. Twelve rounds of buckshot, and it'll it'll shoot that like crazy. But the cheap Walmart stuff, the the the, the bulk ammo, it'll also shoot it. Uh, it'll shoot it really well. So I hope these these little tips, maybe some little fixes. Oh, by the way, one more thing I almost forgot is uh, you you know I also had some problems with it feeding, and another thing that I looked at is I looked at my I looked at the recoil spring. Okay, let's get these springs over here. And uh, I've heard both sides of people saying that that you know spring being compressed is not going to make it weaker. Okay, but I'm telling you, the spring on the bottom was the one that was in the gun. The spring on the top is the brand new one I got from Carolina Shooter Supply. And when I put, I've got I bought two of these. When I bought the new factory spring and put it back in the back in the gun my uh, issues with feeding uh, feeding the shells ceased okay so I don't know you make up your own decision I, I know that this one's this 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 uh, recoil spring here it seems to be a whole lot weaker because what I did is I kept I kept this gun next to the bed uh, with the bolt open okay I didn't I didn't load one I had the bolt open so if I ever had to grab it I'd release the bolt and be ready to go well um, that made my spring weaker in my opinion and so something you might want to think about if you're having problems might want to replace that that recoil spring so anyway that's my Sega 12 and some tips on how to make it a little bit more reliable by the way let me just one thing for maybe some of the new guys now this is a box of the uh, of the the Magnum stuff okay that's what this is but this is what you this is what you want to look for okay you want to look for you want to make sure you got your right the right length okay but the main thing that I look for when I'm looking for for rounds is I look for the weight uh, one and a quarter and you then you go one and an eighth well that's going to be lighter and if you have one ounce that's of course that's going to be lighter than that um, the less weight you have the less energy you're going to have to operate the action to uh, send that uh, send that bolt back and forth and so uh, these one and a quarter ounce uh, rounds that uh, they're good now this is number two shot this is some of the magnum stuff I shot up all my my cheap ammo uh, but look but this is what I do I look at the weight and the heavier that is now you can get some of the Remington uh, the Remington I forget the, that, the exact name of it but it's a 12 gauge two and three quarter inch and it's uh it's let's see what was it? it was one and a quarter I believe but it was number six shot and at Academy, I think they're $6.99, I believe. That's what they are for 25 rounds. That's still pretty cheap. And it'll run this gun really well. So just another thing to look for. So hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, by the way, I'm not a professional gunsmith. This is what I've done to my gun. If some of this stuff that you uh, that I've talked about makes you nervous or you say, well, I wouldn't do that to my gun, okay, well, then don't. Okay, figure out something that'll work for, for your gun. Uh, you know, do what you need to do. This is what I've done, and my uh, Sega 12 is extremely reliable. It's my home defense weapon, and that's, uh, that's the way it is. So, appreciate you watching.